Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. After weeks of intense speculation and unprecedented campaign for different candidates, the UPA has finally announced the candidature of Finance Minister Pranab Mukherjee as its presidential candidate. This has in a sense broken a tradition of the vice presidents being elevated to the president's post. Though in recent past, two vice presidents, Krishnan Kant and Bhairon Singh Shekhawat did not make it. Hamid Ansari, the present vice president, joins the list. The way the run-up to the announcement of the candidature of Mr. Mukherjee turned out, it has left a bad taste in the mouth of many, especially those who covet the tradition and decorum of the highest office. It also has set in motion possible political realignments, with the Trinamul Congress not supporting the UPA candidate. With the reports coming in that the choice of Mamta Banerjee, former President APJ Abdul Kalam, reluctant to join the fray, the election of Mukherjee may be smoother than most expected. Though one can say all's well that ends well, still many questions remain unanswered. Today we'll be looking at the way the entire process of finalizing a candidate happened and also at the possible political realignments and the repercussions on the UPA government. To discuss this, I have with me today Professor Zoya Hassan, Dean and Professor of Political Science, JNU, Bharat Bhushan, Senior Journalist and Political Analyst, Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, Deputy Editor, Frontline, and on the phone line, well-known columnist and senior journalist, Mr. Prem Shankar Jha. Our correspondent, Vishal Dahiya, also will be joining us. Welcome to all of you. Before we start the discussion, let's have a look at what happened at the UPA meeting earlier today. To propose Sri Pranab Mukherjee as the candidate as the candidate for the office of President of India, Sri Pranam Mukherjee has a long and distinguished record of public service spanning over five decades. There is broad support for his candidature. The UPA appeals to all political parties and all members of parliament, members of state legislative assemblies to support the candidature of Sri Pranam Mukherjee for the office of president. I am deeply honored. I am repeating every okay. word twice. I am deeply honored at my on my nomination as a candidate for the election to the office of the president of India by my party and UPA too. I am grateful to Congress President Srimati Sonia Gandhi for this recognition. I accept this offer with all humility. In my long political career, spanning over five decades, I have been fortunate to receive love, affection and confidence of my party colleagues and also the members and leaders of other political parties. I am deeply indebted to them. I will now again seek their indulgence and support for the next few weeks. Thank you. We have requested and appealed to all political parties to lend their support. Okay, before we uh, start the discussion, let me go to uh, our correspondent Vishal Daya. Vishal, uh, how did this all pan out? You know, in the morning we were not very sure of what's going to happen today. In the, by, the, by afternoon things picked up. How did this come about in the, in the evening? There were still some doubts that whether the names are going to be announced, the name is going to be announced today or not. How did this happen? Well, yes, definitely, Girish. There were doubts uh, since morning whether the final announcement from the UPA will come uh, after today's meeting or not. And this uh, uh, doubt was uh, effectively based on uh, uh, the, the, the entire uh, play out of the events which took place in last 48 to uh, 60 or, or 72 hours. Uh, effectively, if you say two, two and a half days, the last two, two and a half days, the kind of uh, hectic political activity which we all have witnessed in the national capital, specifically yesterday when, uh, you know, and day before yesterday when uh, Mamta Banerjee 
Banerjee, met Sonia Gandhi first, then went back to Mulayam, Mulayam Singh Yadav's residence, and then uh, uh, both of them together announced uh, three names which were different than what uh, Sonia Gandhi had suggested. Uh, that is Pranam Mukherjee and Hamid Ansari, the two names which, uh, uh, which had cropped up during uh, uh, Congress president discussion with the other UP alliance partners. And then this entire exercise started from the Congress party of trying to uh, uh, go ahead and salvage the situation because that was something wherein uh, the, those three names included one of the, uh, one uh, one which was uh, of Dr. Manmohan Singh. The Congress party immediately sprang up in defense of the Prime Minister, and then uh, the entire process started of uh, uh, Congress party trying to put its best foot forward and best face forward. That's what uh, uh, you know the entire sequence of events uh, uh, with all kind of back channel talks, not only with the UPA's alliance partners and also those uh, who are supporting UPA from outside, but other smaller groups as well, to ensure that once the candidate's name is announced by the UPA, then there is no trouble and it's a smooth sailing onwards. That's what exactly was the entire motive behind uh, taking uh, this, this, uh, uh, this much time. And that's why we had this UPA meeting slated at 4 p.m. in the evening uh, 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 rather than in the first half of the day. Although the decision to have a UPA meeting was taken at yesterday's uh, uh, core group meeting, uh, Congress core group meeting at around 7, 7.30. But we were told that the UPA's meeting will take place in the second half of the day. And there was a exactly to go ahead and buy a little time to ensure oh. that people are on board and then a formal announcement. UPA meeting was uh, almost a formality because the, uh, the, uh, the discussion with the UPA's alliance partners who were all sitting there, including uh, NCP, Ajit Singh, DMK, all who were sitting there, the discussion had already taken place. It was just a matter of, uh, uh, you know, a, a matter of uh, formality to go ahead. All of them sit together. Uh, 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 Congress president, uh, uh, you know, proposes the name and everybody endorses but yes, there was an, uh, uh, an iota of doubt. There was an element of doubt, uh, uh, in fact, uh, as to whether the final announcement will come after today's meeting or it is going to linger on. Because uh, let's not forget that the Prime Minister uh, also is going to embark on a foreign visit uh, in, 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 next, uh, in, in, okay. in, in next day or two. So okay. obviously, this all, uh, the, the entire sequence of events was uh, definitely a very interesting one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you for all those details. In any case, the... The notification for the presidential polls is going to be issued only tomorrow. Normally, we have seen in the past that these uh, decisions are taken after the notification has been normally uh, you know, issued, but this time there seems to have been some hurry in this. Anyway, first let me go to uh, Mr. Prem Shankar Jha. Mr. Prem Shankar Jha, if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Mr. Jha. Mr. Jha, you have seen many uh, presidential elections. Did you find anything untoward, something different, something unprecedented in this, in this time around? Uh, yes, uh, I have. I, I would like, there are two important points that I would like to make. Right. First, let me start by saying that in, by himself, uh, uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee being the president. He's an extremely... Uh, experienced person, that you can't get a more experienced person. Right. The question is not that. The question is what, is that, what are the implications of making him a presidential candidate? Right. One is that you have politicized the office of the president against the intentions of the constitution makers, against the, 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 the growing, the growing uh, the, let, let us say there was a, a, a to try and depoliticize this, this position, which uh, you, you might, uh, you know, elevating vice presidents. But uh, in any case, we have politicized it to an extent that has never happened before. Uh, there have been other politicians of intelligence, but this is the most powerful single politician in the entire country today, right. not excluding the prime minister, right. because he's the leader of the prime minister's office, uh, party in the Lok Sabha and the head of just about every group of ministers right. the prime minister has set up. That's the first thing. You've taken him out and you uh, he's um, and, and made him the president. Now, president should be a position which is not politics. I don't see how Mr. Pranam is going to achieve that position except the seat as a retirement post, which is right. what I think he's doing. Right. The second point is that uh, uh, you are doing this at a time when the government is weak, is being accused throughout the country with absolute contempt of being paralyzed, unable to do anything, and you take the most effective person in the party, you know, and, 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 and in parliament out. Now, uh, now uh, what does this signify? What, does it, what is the message it sent to the whole world? I'm sorry to say, the message is entirely negative. Okay. Okay, M Mr. Ja. 
we will come back. We'll try to come back to you. The the line doesn't seem to be very very good. Uh, let me come to Bharat Bhushan. Bharat, all's well that ends well. That's what some people may try to say, but the way the whole thing happened, you know, people say that it's unprecedented. We've never seen people campaigning for themselves for presidential elections, but this this time we saw witnessed all that. Yes, but you know, uh, uh, I think the only untoward thing that happened was really the behavior of Mamta Banerjee <laughs> and the way she, uh, uh, you know, took on this government. Uh, in the, in the, Tried to in the, ambush the, the government. In the style of a, 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 you know, a street rogue, you know, uh, uh, that kind of politics may work in West Bengal. It doesn't work at the national level, and mm. she's isolated herself. And I feel sorry for her, and I hope she recovers. Uh, you know lost ground by by being gracious and by uh, supporting UPA's uh, candidature because mm. otherwise she'll have no option but to uh, right. leave the UPA. Right. You know? um, so that is the only untoward thing. But to say that, you know, people have not campaigned, people have campaigned in the past. Uh, they've been uh, worse fights, you know, when uh, Indira Gandhi put up uh, her own candidate. 1969. What so, people say is that after 1969, we have not seen this kind of a atmosphere before the, before a presidential but, polls. you know, since then we also uh, haven't had this kind of political atmosphere in parliament right. where you have coalition governments and in 2014 where you expect the coalition to be, uh, you know, of many more parties, a, a great, much greater fractured polity and therefore the role of the president at that point of time uh, becomes important. You know, do you have a sagacious person there? Do you have a wise person there? Or do you have somebody who's merely a puppet in the hands of uh, various uh, political masters? Okay. Zoya, there's questions of tradition has, has also been raised, decorum, traditions and things like that. Normally, you know, we have seen in the past, as I mentioned in my introduction also, that, you know, um, vice presidents get elevated, especially when the same governments are there, but this time it has not happened. You think this is something which needs to be looked at? Well, yes, I mean, you're right that the convention is that the vice president becomes a president, but I think we have unconventional politics at the moment <laughs> right. uh, because of uh, coalition, because uh, the, the ruling coalition doesn't have a majority in, uh, a majority in, in parliament or in, uh, especially in the Rajya Sabha. So I think these are unusual times, unusual, uh, unusual circumstances. So therefore, perhaps there's only so much that you can say about convention uh, in this case. Right. And as to the process, I mean, I think as you have also pointed out, I mean, in 1969, after all, the Congress party was split right. on the question of the president. Mrs. Ga Mrs. Indira Gandhi proposed V.V. Giri's name uh, against that of the official candidate of her party, which right. eventually led to a split uh, in the Congress. Now, it is true that in the, uh, since then, this has not, uh, this has not uh, happened. But, uh, but I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, the, uh, at the end of the day, this kind of uh, th this kind of process, if it produces a good candidate, I think it is probably okay. But I think the point that is interesting and important is that Pranab Mukherjee can he really be replaced in the UP? Now, of course, nobody is indispensable. Nobody is indispensable. But let's face it, he was he was very powerful. He was really quite quite the center of uh, of Congress and of Congress politics no, and in, of UP too. In fact, that's what Mr. Prem Shankar Jha also was the point he was trying to make that, you know, here was the most powerful man. He said, he, which doesn't, he, he even said that that doesn't exclude the Prime Minister himself. So, here is a man who was seen, in fact, if we all remember in 2007, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee's name had come up for the, during the presidential contest, you know. The but left had suggested. The left had you know, then, then also the, it was said that we can't, we can't do away with, uh, we can't do without Pranam Mukherjee. So this time, why is why has it changed? Why do you think it has changed? Well, I think it has changed primarily because of Pranam Mukherjee himself. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I mean, as you were mentioning, I mean, there have been very active, open campaign uh, for, uh, for for candidature by P. S. Angma, but uh, the, the kind of campaign that Pranabda has been running over the last two months, it has not been so open. But it has there's been certainly been a campaign, and I think he has enlisted the support of a lot of UPA partners initially. And uh, there was some kind of resistance. I mean, in, in terms of real politics, I think there was some kind of resistance from the larger leadership of the Congress right. uh, on this issue. And uh, in a way, I suppose, you know, uh, Pranabda has forced the hand of the Congress. I mean, and with, with some help from Mamta Banerjee and Mulayam Singh Yadav. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, he has posed, and uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, that uh, normally candidates are announced after the notification. The notification. And if you look at that technical detail, 
uh, why the candidature has been announced even before the notification has come. The Prime Minister is going tomorrow. Right. I think you know there must have been some kind of insistence that before the Prime Minister leaves the country, uh, this has to be announced. So I think you know uh, e there is a context to it. And uh, the context is, uh, when, you, when you look at larger politics and the way UPA politics is going to develop in the days to come, with allies like Trinamool Congress and and uh, supporting parties like Mulayam Singh Yadav, you know, trying to uh, trying to throw their weight about. I mean, uh, they have at least shown that you know they can create a panic and you know uh, create a major problem for the right. political authority of the of the UPA and the Congress leadership. So I think in the days to come, the absence of Pranam Pranabda is going to be felt even more strongly by the government. Yeah. Uh, Bharat, coming back to you, one of the other issues is which we saw in this election more pronouncedly than we have seen probably in the past about how this election, this election to the president's post was used as a political bargaining chip. You do you do you, do you think that is that is what? Created this kind of a salid the atmosphere to some certain extent. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the, I, I have no problem with somebody opposing you know, somebody else's uh, candidature. You know, in a democracy, that will happen. The right. question is, how do you go about it? Right. The manner in which uh, Mamta Banerjee and Mulayam Singh Yadav came together, tried to preempt the government. Uh, sullied the image of the Prime Minister, virtually suggesting that this man it, needs to be replaced. Right, right. And in the process, uh, also suggesting that the President of this country is somebody who's not good enough to be the Prime Minister of this country and is somebody who can just be kicked upstairs. Right. So, I, I mean, for the political class to do this right. was shocking. Right. Uh, and, uh, uh, but having said that, uh, now that Pranam Mukherjee has been uh, nominated by the UPA, I think a lot of people will have no choice but to support him. Mulayam Singh Yadav's party has already lent support. Right. The left has already congratulated him. Brinda Karath has right. uh, congratulated him. BSP has him. also... BSP has uh, come in its uh, uh, favour. So, they don't really need Mamata. Right. Now, now they don't need... Actually, they don't need Mamata now. That they, now, the question is... But it's very interesting that just now, before we got in, I got into this discussion, I was watching uh, one of the TMC MPs saying that uh, whether this means that they are, going, they are out of the UPA. He said, no. We, these are only issue-based, we are talking of only issue-based things. So this was an issue on which we have differences. The other issues, we may not have differences. So I think the TMC is now slowly realizing that it cannot, you know. So you think Mamta can come back into the um, UPA and continue as if everything is hunky-dory? I doubt that. It's, uh, she may want to because she stands isolated and she stands isolated largely because of the way in which she went about it. Let's face it, I think as Bharat pointed out, the issue was not that uh, she was not supporting Pranab Mukherjee, but I think the point was that when you are in discussions with the chairperson of the UPA and you come outside her house and you decide to announce uh, the candidates of the Congress party, when the Congress party itself has not officially announced the candidates, that's number one. Number two, within half an hour you announce three candidates. I mean, between them, let's face it, the Samajwadi party and uh, the... And, uh, and Trinamool Congress had about 9% of the vote. Right. Now, with 9% of the vote, you cannot you really you dictate. dictate. So, Absolutely. I think in that sense, she overplayed her she hand. She has overplayed her But I think the whole idea, obviously, was to unsettle the Congress, unsettle the Congress, trigger off a realignment realignment in the hope that there could be an early election and Mulayam Singh Yadav in particular was hoping that before the sheen is off I mean if he could even double his strength in the Lok Sabha from 22 to 45 it would probably be a one of the largest parties yeah, absolutely. and therefore a situation like the one that had arisen in 1998 might arise and and 45 let's face it in a fractured polity is a very large so large I, I, anyway so I think um, that's the that was the interesting we will, we will uh, continue plan. this discussion we need we need to go into a very short break now please keep Keep watching, we'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the presidential polls and the implications of it and also of any possible political realignments. Mr. Jha, if you can hear me. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, Mr. Jha. You think, you think now that the uh, 
the candidate for the of the UPA has been announced, you think that a a, pro, a consensus should be evolved now and 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 uh, a contest should be avoided. Absolutely, I think that then the last uh, the, the the last uh, hope we have of keeping the president above politics. It is imperative we do that, and I and and, and this is I, I hope that the BJP. Uh, will show the responsibility and, and, and join in this. Right. What actually surprises me, and this is not this the only time, over and over again, is the poor parliamentary management of the Congress Party. <laughs> I mean, why why did they not think of the possibility that the that that the that the third, the third front type people would try and hijack the entire process? Right. Why didn't they talk to the BJP first? I mean, the most important thing to do is to avoid this kind of conflict so you can get on with the real, the real job of government. Right. Okay. Okay, Mr. Jha, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Bharat, realignment, we're talking of realignment. This, till this morning, actually, if you had seen, or even till afternoon, there were a lot of you know, permutation combinations being, uh, you know, discussed and all over the place. But now you think that except for Mamta, everything else doesn't, you know, seems to be in the same place now. You know, uh, if you mean realignment uh, of parties for presidential election, I think you will see that happening and you will probably see a unanimous election of uh, Pranam Mukherjee yes. because a contest doesn't make sense. Yeah. A contest would have made sense for the NDA if they could show that they can bring more allies together, they can get Mamta with them, they can get Mulayam because with them. There was, there was talk of uh, Abdul Kalam being brought back as a candidate exactly. and things like that. I don't think now he would, he would venture into this. So yes. Therefore, a contest has become meaningless. Right. So in that sense, there will be a realignment of forces for election of president. Right. But realignment of forces in the UPA, that also might take place. Because right. now Mamta has been diminished. Uh, through this kind of bullying. Right. Uh, and if uh, 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 Mulayam Singh and BSP come on board, uh, at a time of their they choosing... Are on I mean, as far as the presidential election no, is concerned, I mean, they are on board. I mean on board uh, uh, as UPA, not supporting from outside, but right. maybe you know, in, in, in a different Both of them role. can't come together, I suppose. Okay. At least one can come, Mulayam yes. Singh can come. Yes. Then Mamta is not required. Right. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at a time of their own choosing, the Congress boots are out. Right. Uh, they may keep her in now because it's not in her interest to go out without Congress in West Bengal. Right. Uh, given the huge... Uh, uh, Muslim vote there, and that is why Abdul Kalam. You know, this not because you know she's a personal friend of uh, <laughs> Abdul Kalam. It's it's for her constituency back there. Without Congress, she'll find it very difficult uh, if there's an early election. Right. So my suspicion is, at a time of their own choosing, the Congress will boot her out. Okay. Uh, what else? Any other political realignment which we were thinking of, as far as the NDA is concerned, right now, does, that doesn't seem to be happening. The I NDA seems to have lost its lost. Quite a bit of uh, you know weight and in, in in the in the last four or five hours actually in the morning when Mr. Adwani held his press conference after the NDA meeting, the atmosphere was different. Now now they they have no other option but to just you know support Mr. Pranab Mukherjee's candidate. Do you think so? I think so because you know the set. I mean, of course, uh, clearly uh, Mamta has suffered suffered the greatest setback. But I would say some discredit has also gone the way of uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav. Right. And of course, as for the NDA, the basic problem is that there's no unity in the NDA. There were clearly differences from the beginning between the JDU and, let's say, the BJP. The, the JDU was not keen on Kalam for a number of reasons, whereas uh, perhaps the BJP would have settled for India. And the interesting thing, I think, about uh, Mamta Banerjee uh, suggesting the name of Abdul Kalam was that she was kind of signaling that she can, to the Congress that she can do business with NDA as well. And in a way, Mulayam Singh Yadav was doing this, uh, suggesting the same, but perhaps his constraints are much greater, right. uh, greater than that of Mamta Banerjee. Mamta Banerjee, after all, has been in government with the NDA. So in the sense, the NDA India has also suffered a big uh, setback because they couldn't even agree on a candidate, candidate. until, let us say, uh, 2 p.m. or whenever they, uh, their NDA meeting happened. They didn't, they didn't have no, numbers. No, but, but Bharat, like, coming to the other issue which Mr. Prem Shekhar raised right in the beginning, about the impact of Pranam Mukherjee moving over to Rashtrapati Bhavan on the government itself. No, you know, there will be a big the, political vacuum because he was really the brains of UPA 1 absolutely. and UPA 2. Right. Uh, you know, what the prime, you know, the prime Minister is a political person but not political in the same sense as Pranam Mukherjee. Right. Pranam Mukherjee is a conciliator, uh, he's a bridge maker, he can, you know... Uh, he can also be a bully. 
he can also be a bully when he <laughs> thinks bullying would help. Right. So he knows when to lose his temper. Absolutely. He knows when to be charming. <laughs> and that was uh, his great gift. And that is why at one point he was uh, heading more than 50 uh, GOMs, GOMs, super ministers. Yes. Whenever the prime minister of this country would find a controversial decision, it would be thrown. the ball would be thrown at Pranam Mukherjee. Right. And he was really the power behind uh, uh, government. Uh, but, uh, this government. Now, if he goes, they don't have anybody with his yes. acumen, with his ability. Uh, others are dwarfs uh, compared to him, both in terms of experience and in terms of the ability to get along with to other political the parties. The skill to manage uh, Venkatesh. Uh, you know, look at the number of uh, uh, posts which get opened up now. How are they going to fill up all these posts? Who, where, where are the people to fill up all these? Well, it's, it's really, uh, you know, going to be really troublesome for the UP leadership to come up with uh, names and people. I mean, uh, I did a kind of tabulation on the GOMs yesterday. Right. So you had uh, 183 GOMs, I mean, in the last... Uh, eight know, years. Eight years. How many Nine. was Pranab chairing? Eighty. 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 Out of 183, eighty were headed by... And these the must be the more important ones. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, it's very clear that, you know, the, the, perhaps, you know, uh, uh, as, uh, you know, as is being said by a lot of people, he was the only person with some kind of politics in the, in the, in the entire Congress right. and the top leadership. Right. So, you know, it's going to be really... No, there's also, and there's also the question of who's going to be the leader of the house. Who's going to be he the was the leader of the house in Lok Sabha. And the, the kind of reaching out that he was able to do, right. I mean, right. to, to, even to parties like the BJP and, and the CPIM and the, and the left parties, I don't think there is any personality who has that kind of currency, right. I mean, that kind of credibility and currency. You know, that, it's a very important vacuum that's going to, very major vacuum that's going to happen. And it is in this context, I feel, that uh, the realignment of forces within the UPA and uh, with the larger political framework you know, one, may once again kind of push us towards a kind of uh, midterm poll scenario even after the presidential election. So, I mean, Trinamool Congress and uh, uh, Samajwadi Party may have backtracked for now, and SP must have even said that you know that we are not interested in midterm polls, hmm. but uh, that has to be taken with a ton of salt. Uh, but, but the same. Ability, both of you, quick, quickly, both of you, please sum up this. Uh, yes. I'm saying the same ability of Pranam Mukherjee, which was useful in UPA, may be useful. Uh, Whenever there's an election as president, <laughs> the ability to reconcile differences, the ability to give India a stable government of some kind. So, so this ability will be useful even in Rashtrapati Bhavan. But uh, the all that talent of Mr. Pranam Mukherjee is probably will be wasted to a great extent in Rashtrapati Bhavan. Well, but he was keen to be elevated, yes. as has been said, even on this program, that in many ways if Mamata Banerjee forced the hand of uh, the Congress, so did... Uh, so did Prana Mukherjee. He was obviously he would have preferred to be prime minister, but if since that was not uh, that was not possible, it's obvious okay. he settled for the uh, for the next best, which was uh, the president. Okay. I mean, the president of India is supposed to be the top job which anybody can uh, you know think of, and I I'm sure everybody agrees that Mr. Prana Mukherjee has earned his way to the Rashtrapati Bhavan to have a good rest and you know. After all <laughs> these years of hectic <laughs> politics, don't be too sure about it. Politicking, which I he has done, he, I'm sure he will be enjoying his his stay in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Uh, anyway, it has been a very eventful presidential race, though it has all ended in a whimper. Uh, hopefully, it has ended in a whimper. So, let us wait and watch how the the next round of elections to the vice president will will pan out. Thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Bharat Bhushan, Zoya Hassan, and Venkatesh Ramakrishnan, and Mr. Premshan Garja. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture on Monday.